But not when he's home. Your host, your hero, my uncle, Red Green. Thank you very much. Thank you. Kind of a frustrating week up at the lodge this week. We got this uh, historical society, Possum Lake Historical Society. It thinks everything should be the same way it was 100 years ago. You know, I'll tell you something. New is a lot of times better. You know, the advertisers say, New and improved. You don't hear old and improved, you know? <laughs> Nothing gets old and improved. Except you, Bernice. <laughs> you know, actually, Uncle Ed, what I think they're doing is, is a very good idea. I think it's great. Preserving our heritage. Because, yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, history, history is an excellent teacher. If you want a clue into the future, look into the past. Oh, yeah. Well, Harold, if you want a clue into your future, look into the mirror. <laughs> This is a historical society. They've been calling me all week. I don't know what they want. Probably a donation. And for what? They're like a telephone without a disease, you know? I'll tell you, I wouldn't give them a dime. Would not give them one dime. Oh, you might change your mind. What do you got there, Herm? This? Yeah. Oh, this? Yeah. Oh, this. Oh, yes. Well, this, this is just a letter from the historical society with a proposal that the lodge might be deemed a uh, historical location. Wow. Oh. All right. Oh. Now you're talking. Yes, and yeah. so were you. What were you saying? Oh. Uh, all right, uh, if anybody from this historical society is watching, uh, I certainly hope you didn't misunderstand some of my earlier comments, but, you know, if you'll let me finish, um, I was, what, I, what I meant was that I think that the lodge here is a perfect place for you to spend your restoration dollars. And if you do happen to check your, your voicemail later and, and hear a message from me that includes the, the phrase, up yours with a wire brush, uh, <laughs> What I, what I, what I was, uh, that was, that was really talking about a certain kind of wire brush that the, uh, the pioneers used. Uh, they would, uh, they often would clean the, the old wire brush cleanings they would do on buildings like the lodge, which are our heritage that we inherit. How can you stand there and say things that don't have a shred of truth to them? Well, that's something that married people just do, Harold. <laughs> Except for us, Bernice. scenes from this particular episode. We haven't decided whether or not to watch it. We're hoping this will kind of push you over the top on that. We're going to try and entertain you as long as we can. We even got something for you to drink. Big bottle of cola. Uh, Richardson's Music Store is looking for a piano teacher. Uh, applicants must be female with at least 50 years experience, blue hair, and funny smelling clothes. <laughs> So I go against my better judgment. I let them classify the lodge as a historical site. They lay this on me. Rules and regulations. What I can do, what I can't do. How I have to maintain the integrity of the building. Why should the building have integrity if the people in it don't? <laughs> yeah, but Uncle Red, the historical society's paying for all the work, aren't they? Yeah, right. They'll cover one third of the restoration costs up to a maximum of $50. Well, the roof repair alone is going to be 500 bucks, and that's just for the duct tape. <laughs> See what happens when you don't read the fine print? Yeah, you end up having your nephew work for you. <laughs> anyway, I got a better solution. I got the Historical Society to agree to declassify the lodge and leave us alone, and we've agreed to give them our old smokehouse, which is the most historical thing we have. What's so historical about the old smokehouse? Well, Harold, back in, I believe it was 1856, the first settlers came and they built that old smokehouse as kind of a crude cabin to get them through the first rough winter. And then I believe when they built a larger home, they converted that building into, a, into the smokehouse you see now. Oh, really? Yeah, I believe oh, so. yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> well, then how come it's just like a prefab piece of plywood that we use as a tool shed now? Because you're lying, that's why! <laughs> You know, Harold, I believe it was Abraham Lincoln who said, the history is tinged with truths and half-truths that are as one. He never said that, and you're lying again. No. Yes, no. Uncle Red is making lies. No, Uncle Red is making history. <laughs> okay, it's time to play 
the Possum Lodge Word Game. And this week, we're playing for a beauty of a prize. If you own a Magic Master refrigerator freezer with a self-defrosting unit and it's got the high efficiency thermostat, well, then you've got the perfect place to store this week's grand prize, a big bottle of cola. <laughs> yes, made available from Rita Sundries and such. OK, Uncle Red, you have 30 seconds to get Mr. Mike Hammer to say this word. Serve. <laughs> Serve. Yeah, all right, all right. 30 seconds and go. All right, Mike, yeah, you go into a store, the clerk comes over and says, have you been shoplifting? No, 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 I, I, she, no this is in a nice way. She says, may I something you? Strip search? <laughs> All right, let's, okay, okay, it's a restaurant, okay? It's a restaurant. You go in the restaurant, the waitress comes over to... Hassle me. Oh. Mike, she's friendly. She says, can I something you? Well, how friendly is she? Oh. Exactly? Oh. <laughs> no, no. All right, all right, all right. Remember when you lived at home, okay? Dinner was ready, your mom would say, dinner is... Poured. <laughs> Almost out of time, Uncle Red. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, Mike. Uh, the outside of police car, okay? It says, to something and protect. Oh, I don't know. I just see the headlights and then the back seat. <laughs> well, don't you, don't you notice on the outside of the door as you're getting in? No, I'm usually unconscious. <laughs> and then I have my jacket over my head when I go to jail, and, and I try to keep it there till I've served my sentence. Hey, hey, okay. because the afternoon movie was Where Eagles Dare. You know, it's kind of a guy movie. You know, good guys, bad guys, and they make war look like fun. You gotta love that. <laughs> Unfortunately, I was mowing the lawn at the full speed, and on my last pass there, I sideswiped Bernice's cement to leprechaun lawn ornament. You know what they say? Leprechauns are lucky. I'll tell you, this one will never get lucky again. And my lawn tractor didn't fare much better. Now, some cynical people might say, boy, it's got to be more than a coincidence that you wreck your old lawn tractor the day after you see the new lawn tractors down at Murray's store. <laughs> but Bernice, believe me, I was upset. I could hardly enjoy Where Eagles Dare. But you know, at the end there, when Clint Eastwood, he, he rides off a motorcycle sidecar unit. Motorcycle sidecar, by golly. Looked like a lot of fun to me. Got to figure out how to get one of those. But unfortunately, I, I'd spent so much money on the, on the new lawn tractor that I had to find a cheap way to make myself one of these units. So basically, you got three components. You got your motor, you got a cycle, you got a sidecar. I got the motor, I got the sidecar. All I need is the cycle. So I strung a rope across at chest height right across the bike path up here. Oh, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh. Oh, Harold, you're fine. Okay, all right, we're in business now. Now, usually, the motor is in the cycle part, huh? But with me, I got the motor in the sidecar. So the project becomes real easy. All I gotta do is weld the cycle, the sidecar. You know, welding may look dangerous because of course you got a full tank of oxygen there and a full tank of explosive acetylene. But of course, that's why they give you the safety goggles. <laughs> All right, uh, let's start by just uh, welding the bike to the lawnmower and then uh, oh, we're done. Almost done here. <laughs> All right. Uh, may have had the torch a little hot there. This is why you want to keep a garden hose around. <laughs> um, All right. No, that's no. That'll uh, that'll burn down in no time. You know. Uh, I had good time to use the safety goggles. Huh? They're tinted. <laughs> so I'm thinking I'm not even going to bother welding around. I'll just. I'm gonna use the handyman's secret weapon there. Is this tape on fire? No. <laughs> All right. We're all set to go where eagles dare. So remember, if women don't find you handsome, they should at least find you handy. So, it starts, it runs. It goes, it goes fast, it turns, it doesn't turn. I want to take a few minutes and talk to some of you older fellas out there. You know, it comes a time in every man's life when your doctor is going to prescribe for you 
a little pill, maybe for your heart, or your knee, or your back. And like it or not, you're going to have to take one of those pills every day for the rest of your, all of a sudden, very short life. <laughs> now, a lot of you may not react favorably to this new regimen. It's Tuesday, so it must be time for my anti-inflammatory. <laughs> and I want you to look at the bright side. All right? The biggest problem in your life right now can be solved with a pill. Right? Think back to all the problems you had when you were younger. Right? Love, money, children, work, neighbors. Couldn't solve them with a pill. Huh? <laughs> See? You're not getting older, you're getting better medication. <laughs> So enjoy, and don't forget your pills. <laughs> Remember, I'm pulling for you. We're all in this together. <laughs> Man, we're going from the fry pan to the fire with this historical society. I wish they were history. <laughs> they decided that the old smokehouse is not a historical site because somebody told them my story about the settlers was a lot of baloney. <laughs> Pretty much what I thought. Anyway, before they start eyeballing the lodge again, I figured out a way to make the smokehouse into a cash donation. We're going to sell it and then give them the money. Hey, that's a great idea, Uncle Red. That's terrific. And I could be the sales agent. I've seen them on TV. Yep. I've seen them on TV. I can yep. do it. You know, like, yep. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm looking for cash, looking to get out of town in a hurry. I'm Harold Green and I can sell your house fast. Call 1 800 Harold. I'm a closer. <laughs> You're a what? I'm a closer. Well, start with your mouth. Okay. <laughs> Carol, I'd rather you just kind of lay low on this deal, okay? Nobody's going to buy this place if they know you live around here. <laughs> so if any of you are looking for a, uh, a smokehouse, you know, a place you can smoke, not many of them left, eh? <laughs> we got a good one for sale, real solid plywood. Oh, well, it's not real solid. Well, the knots are solid, and, the, uh, and I believe the door is pretty much rusted solid there, and uh, got the central heating in her. It does? Well, the wood stove's in the middle. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I think, I believe, I believe at one time uh, she had electricity. Yeah. Well, when was that? When, when the lightning hit it. You know. <laughs> Harold, don't, don't be so negative, okay? In the Bible, you know, there was a guy who killed the Philistines with the jawbone of an ass. You're going to kill this sale with exactly the same weapon. <laughs> okay, uh, it's once again this time, uh, it's a time for the uh, meeting of Men's Anonymous. And as always, I'd like to introduce my Uncle Red to lead us in the pledge. Go, Red. I'm a man, uh, but I, I can, can change, change if, if I have, have to, to, I guess. <laughs> At this time, it's, it's, it's my pleasure to introduce uh, Mr. Dougie X, <laughs> who has something to share with the group. Mr. Franklin? Oh, my God. Go. Thank you, Harold. Fred, gentlemen. Something happened to me last week that I would like to share with you. I came home from work one night and settled in for a night of TV. I, I had a drink in the cup holder and my armrest. I had my Lebanese hickory smoked. Baba Ganoush dip on my lap. <laughs> Had my chips to my left, my bag of jujubes to my right, and a ding dong in my top pocket. <laughs> my chair was in the fully reclined position, gentlemen, I was in for the duration. <laughs> then it happened. About halfway through the opening theme of a TV show, I realized, phantom pains, I did not have my remote. <laughs> I looked everywhere for it, under my arm, a under my other arm, uh, down in amongst the seats, my remote was nowhere to be found. For the first time in my life, gentlemen, I watched an entire hour of television without changing the channel once. Okay. All right. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. Well, not easy to do. What show did you watch for an entire hour? Uh, Baywatch salutes the thong. <laughs> Good. All right, kind of getting back to basics on uh, this adventure with Bill. Back to good old fishing. There, yeah, that's a beautiful. Well, that's quite a lure you got there. Watch it, watch it, watch it. <laughs> got the sharp little prongs on her there. Just, you know, you get out there by the water and just forget about it. You should feel more tension, maybe. Oh, 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 my. 
Oh, you caught one on your first cast. <laughs> oh, that's so bad. I would think that would that would smart a little bit. Yeah, right there. Oh, he's lucky. He didn't go up his nose. So I don't I don't think it'll require surgery. I just Harold, take that off yourself. Don't let don't let Harold don't let him do it. Harold, 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 don't let him do it. Harold, Harold, don't let him. Harold, Harold. <laughs> well, I tried to warn you. All right, okay, no, that's fine, that's all for it. Now, that's part of the bonding experience. You get a uh, little man with a, a younger fella, and they get out there, and they just have a fun night. See those band-aids? They, they don't hurt your appearance at all, Harold. I don't think the girls will go, those are chick magnets. That's what those are. Don't you worry about that. Yeah, all right, a little, little lesson. That's how you cast. That's how you cast. Come on now, boys. Now, don't, no, 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 don't, no, no, come on, come on, come on. I knew it, I knew it, I knew it. All right, now they're all set. Get to, get to bait on. What kind of you guys fishing with worms, eh? Get to worms. Look at that little, that's cute, eh? He can't put his own... Come on now, Bill, put that on. Come on. You don't know him. Oh, you do. You're pathetic. Oh, you got the hook up. Oh. Oh. All right. Is the hospital close by, this fishing spot? Yeah, you own this one, Harold. Just rip her off there. <laughs> oh, I shouldn't laugh. I shouldn't laugh. All right. Okay, so they got the worms on the hook. Yeah, they're happy, 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 aren't they? Unbelievable. Okay, away you go, boys. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I think the important thing is they're spending the day together, eh? Look at they think they got something. <laughs> Reel her in, Harold. You were a good yank. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh! oh. <laughs> okay, it's a poor fisherman that eats his bait, you know. What are you doing, Harold? Oh, okay. All right, all right. Don't worry, Bill. Get that out of there. Just pop that out there, Bill. Oh, my gosh. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh. oh. Here, I'll watch you both get a, get a drink or something. Rinse that out. Take off. Get lost. Beat it. Man, these guys are frightening. All right, Bill. Reel her in. Reel her in, Bill. Yeah, that's right. It's a tree. <laughs> you catch one, Bill? Oh. Oh, he's got a lovely bass wood. Yeah. Harold was helping clean that. Oh, my God. Oh. oh. There we go. <laughs> Don't forget the gills. Oh. We've done a total rethink on the whole smokehouse project thing. We're not going to be able to sell it. Real estate market is too soft, and so is the ground under the smokehouse, to be honest with you. <laughs> so instead, we're going to have a lottery. <laughs> okay, right. Nobody wants a smokehouse, okay? They're not going to buy tickets for a lottery if that's the main prize. <laughs> well, that's not the main prize, Mr. Jump to Conclusions. We're not going to give the smokehouse away. We're going to blow it up. <laughs> The winner gets to press a button on the detonator. Uh, how many tickets can I sign you up for there, Harold? None! I'm against this completely on principle. This is incredible. Come on! I got a good mind to go down there and chain myself to the building. Well, it would probably help ticket sales. <laughs> oh, come on, Harold. It's not dangerous. They rigged the explosives so the building just kind of falls in on itself. Uncle Red, if we've learned anything from this history I'm trying to preserve, it's that senseless destruction is robbing our future generations of, of its birthright. Well, okay, fine. But that shouldn't interfere with my right to the pursuit of happiness, Harold. We have laws in this country. And these laws are meant to guarantee us the greatest freedom in the world, Harold. That's our legacy. That's our great tradition. And now, if you'll excuse me, I gotta go blow up a building. <laughs> this is the repair shop part of the show we call, If It Ain't Broke, You're Not Trying. <laughs> Ernie Dogan's here with something for us to fix. What do you got there, Ernie? Well, Red, I was hoping you could fix my guitar. Well, maybe it doesn't look too bad. What's wrong with it? Well, it doesn't, it doesn't have any character. Eh? All, all the big stars, they got guitars with character. Oh. W Willie Nelson, his is all hacked up. I heard he had it specially tuned to his voice, eh? Oh, I don't yeah. know. <laughs> and then B.B. King, he named his guitar, a special name, calls it Lucille. Well, then uh, maybe you should name your guitar, Ernie. Oh, I'm way ahead of you there, Red. I call it Doug. <laughs> yeah, you see, I, I want to get away from that sexist thing. Yeah. yeah, well, what would you like me to do to it? Well, maybe just scuff it up a little, put some stickers on it or something. Make it look like it's I've been on the road touring with it. Or... All right, well, why don't you hang on over there? And All right, I got her here. I'll just uh, drop the belt sander on her a couple of times. And okay. Hang on to Doug. I got him. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Oh. Uh, Arnie, I, uh, you 
know, I think we've done it. It sure looks like it's been on the road, huh? <laughs> what, you, you think it's more me now? Well, it's certainly tuned to your voice. It's flat. <laughs> Smokehouse. Could have been called a firehouse or a flying debris house. What the heck went wrong there, Uncle Red? Well, Edgar set the charges wrong. You know, we wanted an implosion, we got an explosion. He figured it was a typo. <laughs> I just figured the building was going to fall over. I didn't expect the entire thing to rocket out of the ground like that. Yeah. Well, see, that's that old plywood. It's solid. I mean, she really held together, right? Oh, yeah, a yeah. bonus there. Yeah. It was weird, though, seeing this entire building, like, tumbling across the sky. Yeah. Made an eclipse over our heads when it passed over. Yeah. I was afraid it was going to come down on the main road, but luckily she caught a favorable wind and headed into town. <laughs> but, uh, what building did it actually hit down there? Uh, historical Society building. <laughs> yeah, they're talking about closing the whole place down now. They figure it's bad for their image if a historical society can't preserve their own building. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that's a shame. I guess I'll just... Kind of hang on the cash from the tickets there until they make up their mind. <laughs> <laughs> Meeting time, Uncle yeah. Red. You go ahead, Harold. I'll be down in a minute, eh? Okay. All right, then. <laughs> well, if my wife is watching, I'll be coming straight home after the meeting. And uh, now that we got no historical society, if I'm the old thing you're trying to preserve, you're going to have to do it all on your own. <laughs> and to the rest of you, thanks for watching. On behalf of myself and Harold and the whole gang up here at the lodge, you keep your stick on the ice. Uh, this is our first announcement. You okay there? Yeah. Right. Okay, this is our first announcement, okay? Um, the Alliston brothers have been remanded until uh, next month, and Jimmy Gristle is out on bail, and Joey Featherstone got probation, so uh, the team photo for the Possum Lake Hockey League is on for tonight. <laughs> All right? Now, if we don't do it tonight, it might be three to five before everybody's available again. So, tonight. <laughs>